The Liquify Persona and Affinity Photo allows you to add distortion effects to your images. Is it just a cool toy or are there some real uses for it? Today we'll check it out. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent and today we're looking at the Liquify tool in Affinity Photo. Now if you're like me, the first time you used this tool, you probably made some cool swirly effects, but then you kind of wondered what was the actual point of it. Well, there are some really powerful ways to use this tool and we'll check it out in this video. Now first, let's talk about how to access the Liquify tool, and there are actually two ways to use it. The first way to use Liquify is to use the Liquify Persona, which is this button up here, Liquify Persona. Now if you have an image layer selected here, you'll have to rasterize it before you can access that tool. I already have this as a pixel layer here, as you can see, so I'll just click the Liquify Persona here. So now you'll see that the interface has changed here, and this gives me all my Liquify tools. So I'll explain what these do in a bit, but first let me just make some changes to my image. So I'll just kind of randomly push things around. And then when I'm done, I'll click apply. Now the downside of using the Liquify Persona is that it's a destructive process. You can see that my image here has been permanently changed. I can press Control Z to undo it, but really as I go further and further in my editing process, I'm not gonna be able to reverse what I did in the Liquify Persona. Let me undo this. A better way to access the Liquify tool is to use the Liquify Live Filter. And that's what I'll be using in this video. To access the Live Filter, we can click on this icon here that says Live Filters. So I'll click on this. Then I'll select Liquify here. And you see it brings me to the same interface. So I'll make some changes in this tool. I'll just randomly make some distortions. If I click Done, now what you'll notice is that if I expand my layer stack, Liquify is being applied independently to this image here. And I can actually toggle it on and off. So if I turn it off, you see the effect isn't happening anymore. I can turn it back on. I can adjust the level of transparency. I can even add a mask to it if I want. So I'll add a mask here. I'll drag it to the Liquify layer. And if you know how masks work, I'll select a brush. I'll select black here. And then if I paint on my mask, you can see the black part isn't having any effect anymore. So I'll turn off the mask and I'll turn it back on. So if you want to use Liquify, I recommend accessing it through the live filter method here. Okay, so let's jump into this tool and see how it works. I'll again add my Liquify filter here, a new one. Now one of the key things to understand about Liquify is this concept of the mesh. So if I look at my image here, you can see this grid. And the mesh is actually what's holding the distortion data that's gonna affect our image. Now over here on the right, we have the mesh visualization controls. I can change the color to something that's a little more contrasting here. Maybe this red is easier to see against a blue sky. You can also change the number of divisions. So if I go up, it becomes less dense. If I go down, it becomes more dense. If you make the mesh too fine grained, it might take a toll on your CPU's performance. I usually just leave it at the default here. And of course with the show mesh option, we can toggle it on and off. And for these other options down here, you can actually export and import your mesh. Okay, so now let's look at the controls over here and some of them have better names than others. Now these top two options are just really about controlling your canvas. So we have the hand tool here to move it around. I can click and drag. Then we have the zoom tool. But these top two options, I just use the mouse for it anyway. If you click and hold the middle mouse button, you can drag around. And I just use control and the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. These blue ones here are where it starts to get interesting. So the first one is the push forward tool. So I'll click on that. And I'll zoom into my building here. Now this is simply gonna push my mesh in the direction that I drag my mouse. So I'll click and drag to the right here. And you can see I'm pushing my mesh to the right and it's distorting my image. And of course, if I drag to the left, it's going to drag to the left there. I can find some other area here. I can drag this up higher. So that's dragging it up. And then over here, I can drag down. So this one's pretty straightforward. And if you look at the mesh here, you can see how it's distorting the image. So over here we have the reset mesh button. I'll click that to get back to my initial state. So reset mesh. And we have our original mesh again. Now the next option is called the push left tool. And this is one of those confusing names because it doesn't always push left, but let me show you what it does. So if I click and drag up on my mouse, it will actually push my mesh to the left. But if I click down, it'll push to the right. If I push to the right over here, it'll actually move my image up. So dragging to the right pushes upwards. And over here, if I drag to the left, that pushes downwards. So typically I use this tool for dragging along the edge of something if I wanna move it evenly. So this building here, if I wanna make it a little bigger maybe, I can drag up. On the right side, I'll drag down. And that pushes it to the right. So that's one use of that tool. Now you can see my cursor might be too big for some fine grain controls. I can change how my brush acts over here. So I can drag the size smaller. I can also use the bracket keys. So I'll make it a little bit bigger here. And I can get into smaller areas if I like. The hardness, opacity, and speed will also affect how strongly the brush acts with each stroke you make. Next, we have the Liquify Swirl tool. So I think this design will clearly show what this does. So if I click on my image here, you can see that it's starting to swirl around. 
And this is a good example of showing what the speed does. If I increase the speed, it'll actually twirl around much faster. So I think this one is pretty good for abstract designs. Let me reset the mesh. A similar effect is the turbulence tool down here. Let me click on this, make the brush bigger. So I'll add the turbulence effect. I'll just click and hold here. And you can see it's giving this almost watery distorted effect to my graphics. You can see the mesh is quite chaotic there. I think the turbulence effect would be really cool for creating textures and noise effects. Now let's look at the pinch and punch tools. And these two just do the opposite of each other. So let me do punch first. Punch is going to make the area under the cursor smaller. So for example, if I want to make her eyes smaller, I could click and hold here and her eyes become a little bit smaller. I could do the same thing over here on the right. Made her eyes smaller. And I could do the same thing with the nose. So these tools are a good way to correct the sizes of things. Now over here with reconstruct mesh, if I drag this back to zero, you can see what it originally looks like. And I'll put it back to 100%. Now I just used the punch tool. As I said, the pinch tool just does the exact opposite. So I'll click pinch and this will make our eye bigger again. Now for most of these tools, if you hold alt, it'll give the effect in the opposite direction. That goes for the twirl effect and also the pinch and punch tool. So technically you could just use one of the pinch and punch tools and just use alt to give the opposite effect. Let me reset the mesh here. So next we have the mesh clone tool. Now before I made both of these eyes smaller manually, the clone tool will let me copy the effect of one part of an image to the other part of an image. So let me show you how that works. So I'll use the punch tool and I'll make one of her eyes smaller. Let's say that's a good size there. Now I can select the mesh clone tool. I'll hold alt and I'll click on this eye here. And then what happens is I'll click on this other eye and it just makes it smaller. It just copies the mesh from my source and puts it under my cursor over here. So it's a convenient way of copying an effect from one part of your image to the other. So that's how the clone tool works. Now under clone, we have the reconstruct tool. So if I click on reconstruct, that's just gonna start rebuilding my mesh to its original grid. So if I zoom in here, I have reconstruct selected. If I start painting back in, notice how my mesh is getting built back up to its original state. If I zoom in, you can see it's all perfectly straight again. And that's how you can undo the liquify effect in parts of your image. Next, we have the freeze and thaw tool. And this is really just about masking where we want the effect to happen. So let me click freeze and I'll add a freeze effect over this part of my image here. And really all this does is prevent the area under the red from being affected by your tools. So I'll go back to my turbulence tool and I'll click and drag it. And we can see as the areas under the red aren't really being affected at all. And thaw is just erasing my mask. So I'll click thaw. I'll erase this top part here. And now if I go back to my turbulence tool, if I add it over here, now the turbulence is having an effect. Now over here in the bottom right, we have other mask options. So invert mask is just gonna invert what's on my canvas here. So if I say invert mask, now the mask is just backwards. I can change this part in the middle here and not change the red area. I can also clear the mask. So this erases everything. And I can also mask my whole image. So let's look at some real examples of using the liquify tools. Here I have an image and I have no idea what this person looks like in real life, but they're really close to the camera and I think there may be some distortion going on here. So I'll click my live filters. I'll click liquify. Now I just want to isolate it to the eyes. I'll click the freeze tool. Let's paint around the eyes so we don't change the other stuff. I'll just protect this area there. Let's get the punch tool. This will make things smaller by default. I'll press here. And I'll make the eye a little bit smaller. Now I could just do the same thing on the other side, but I'll use the clone tool. So I'll click clone. I'll alt click on this eye. And this is just going to copy the mesh effect to the other side. So now I'll click on this other eye and it's smaller there. I'll clear the mask. Maybe I want the nose to be a little bit smaller too. Made a little bit of a change there and I'll click done. Now I'm back in the photo persona. And if I expand this here, if I toggle the live filter, you can see the before and after. So before, after, before, after. Here's another example where I might want to make some small touch ups. You can see the right side of her pants flow very nicely. But on the left side, we have this pocket here. So this is a good scenario to use the liquify tool. Let's add the liquify filter. And in this situation, I'll use the push left tool. I'll change my brush size. Let's zoom in. Now I always forget which direction goes which. I'll just try pushing down here. Yeah, pushing down goes to the right. So I'll just keep going over this edge and basically pushing the pants in. I'll keep going here and I'll zoom out. And I think that's much better. I'll click done. So once again, before, after, before, after. Another example of using the liquify tool is for product mockups. So maybe I want to put a design on this shirt, but I want to bend it a little bit to reflect the curves of the shirt. Now there are other ways to do this. For example, we could use a displacement map, but I'll show you how we could use a liquify filter for this technique also. Now, one thing I'll do is I'll just manually create my own grid for a reference. Let me draw some lines here. 
I'll just make a stroke here with some lines. Let's duplicate these. I'll select them. Let's space them evenly. Create a grid. So that's a nice little reference grid there. I'll open the liquify filter here. Now I think with this one, I'll use the push left tool. Just want something subtle here. Go down here, a little bit over here. Just a little bit of distortion. Just drag over the curves there. Maybe I'll touch it up a little bit with the push tool. I can see some of these areas are a little too distorted. So I'll kind of make them a little bit smaller again. So there we have kind of a rough bending effect. So I'll click done. Now let me bring in a potential design for this t-shirt. So I'll go to file, place, and I'll bring in an image here. So I'll put the image down. I'll fit it to the shirt here. Now I'll take this liquify effect I made and I'll drag it to the design. And I'll let go. I don't need this grid anymore, I'll just delete it. So now you can see the design is kind of bent like the shirt. Now with the move tool selected here, let me select the lock children option. This is gonna keep my liquify filter in place. Now I can move the shirt around and you can see how it's actually curving in real time. And I can change the opacity to make it look a little more realistic. I can change the blend mode to multiply. I'll resize it. And now I think we have a much more organic look. So this is without the filter, with the filter, without the filter, with the filter. Have you found any clever ways to use the liquify tool? If so, leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.